and allow them to take their seats. Thank you very much. Uh, could I request that the, pre the, the family sits whilst we take the rendition of the national anthem? I was told that there is a recording of the national anthem that is going to be played. Could we please have the national anthem? Many thanks. We may be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As I said earlier on, my name is Ayanda Lodlo, and I will be your program director for this morning. I want to start by first conveying our heartfelt condolences to you and your family, Good Pet, um, and the children of the late Sislingiwe wishing you fortitude and strength amidst the confusion, sadness, hurt that goes with grief in a family that is bereaved. We share in your pain. We will be there by your side whenever you need for us to give you an ear or a shoulder or to bring a tissue to your children to wipe the tears from their eyes. Sinani siti tutuzegani putpet. Nabantwana. I would like at this time to invite Major General Tima to do the opening prayer. Major General, over to you from the South African Police Service. I'm not sure if the Major General is here. In his absence, I would request anybody who is good in prayer and be rest assured I'm not one of those people. If nobody volunteers, could I abuse you, Deputy Minister, and ask us to lead in prayer, sis?
Good morning. I've just been asked to pray on this difficult day where we just gathered here today to come and say our goodbyes in memory of our beloved sister, mother, aunt, wife, granny, comrade Lengiwe Kizi. May her soul rest in peace. Mudimo Lorado, Mudimo Beats Hepo. We are gathered here today, this morning, in this somber mood, just coming together in memory of this beautiful soul that has just departed this world. We ask that you be with us this morning, Lord as we will be continuing with our, de our deliberation. I put her family in your hands, Lord, during this difficult time. I put all of us who have lived with her in your hands so that you will be the one that will actually journey with us through this difficult path. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful life that you had given to this world. It is this moment where we're going to be hearing about her participation in various types of activities and events of life that we all know that she gave her all to it. And it wasn't just her all to her family, it wasn't just her all to her community. It wasn't just her all to the country. It was her, her all to the continent of Africa and to the world. She will be missed, Lord. But we know you never allow any vacuum. This that we feel like a vacuum today, Lord, we know you will come back and fill it. And not fill it only for us as the African National Congress, for us as South Africans, but also for the family, fill that vacant space that has been created by her departure. Lord, she has run her race with perseverance. What awaits her is the crown of glory from you, the righteous Lord. We ask that her soul be received in the galaxy of the universe because moving forward, she's going to become an angel. An angel that will actually be overseeing everything that she ever participated in during her lifetime. May her soul rest in peace, Lord. Strengthen the family as we prepare also towards her burial. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Deputy Minister Dr. Kana Bilani Machaka, thank you very much. I know that you were not prepared, but those in faith are always prepared to come to the stage and render prayer so that we could be with the family and also console them in this hour of need. I would really like to speak to the children of Usislenyue. Londiwe, Zinzifezile, and Nobisizu. I don't have to tell you that you had a wonderful mother. It's something that you know yourselves. And I don't have to tell you that you had a wonderful mother because you also had a wonderful, you have a wonderful father that gave her space to flourish and gave her support and gave you a home that is warm and filled with love. That love is what you will miss as we lay her to rest. You have been busy trying to arrange for her funeral. Once that all is gone, the pain will engulf you once more. But I can tell you that with time, the pain will fizzle and all that you will remain with are the beautiful and wonderful, loving, 
empathetic and supportive memories that your mother gave to you throughout your lives. To her colleagues in the African National Congress and also to her colleagues in the executive and in other places where she has worked or in lives that she has touched across the continent as a woman activist and also here in South Africa. Condolences to all of you. Sislengiwe has left with us many memories and that is what I would like us to live with. Minister Maitengwana Mashaban, condolences to you, sis. The deputy minister is gone. You worked together for so many years, both in the ANC Women's League and also in the presidency in a capacity as the deputy to you. And I'm sure you also live with, a, she lives with a lot of memories that you will cherish forever. And I would request that all of us think of the wonderful moments that we've had with her. If there are sad moments, annoying moments, those are moments for us to bring it to ourselves to forgive, but also where we have wronged her and hurt her. Now is the time to reflect on who we are as people. Thank you very much, uh, Pet, for allowing me to stand here before you and be the program director at the memorial service of your beautiful wife, Osis Lengu. And thank you to her children, too. I would want now to invite a family friend, Mam Sikosa, to come forward and give a tribute. I'm not sure if uh, Mam Sikosa is here. Unfortunately, in these days, we set times, and the times are also regulated by COVID regulations, and we have to make a plan. If not, we skip that item and move on. I see people wearing masks. Everybody is wearing a mask, which is the correct thing to do. So I cannot see faces that I can call up to say, come. The only reason why I could call the deputy minister was that I'm so used to her, even with her mask on. But I am not sure who would want to come through without me calling out names to just come and give a brief tribute. As someone thinks about coming and volunteering to come up, could I ask for a musical item? From those that are dealing with sound, Stella, a musical item, please.
Thank you very much uh, for the beautiful item of music. The next speaker is here with us, so could you please come to the podium? Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Munene Koza. I stand before this congregation on behalf of my mother, Mamsi Koza, with a broken heart and a veneration for her friend, Mam Lengi Wenkize. Many have spoken and will speak to her contribution as a comrade, a politician, and a diplomat. But mine is to share with you, in my mother's voice, who Mam Lengi was as a friend, a mother, a sister, a daughter, and a human being whose life mattered so deeply. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 25 to 29 read, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. And surpass them all, Mam Lengi did. I now speak in the voice of my mother. I met Sis Lengi about 28 years ago. Then she was working as a volunteer social work professional at the Goppen Clinic, a non-profit organization. I was also a volunteer professional nurse, and we just clicked. We were both inv inv invited to join the Wittgopen Board of Directors, and ultimately she was appointed as chairman person of the board. She contributed hugely in raising funds for the clinic from national and international funders. I recall in particular that she was approached by an organization, um, <clears throat> beg your pardon, Kumbegeni, where she raised funds which were used to build a block of offices just behind the clinic, which are still existing now and utilized by social workers and other health teams to provide empowered healthcare services. It is so important to note, Zislengi had a passion and was co concerned with providing care for abandoned children and women, especially regarding pre and post traumatic stress related to HIV and AIDS. My friendship with her grew when she became a founding mem member of an empowered group of 20 women, Ubuntu Women's Club. On this platform, she volunteered, pardon me, uh, pioneered initiatives like take a girl child to work and adopt the granny and take her to church. But I want to revisit a personal note. Whenever we went for lunch, she would always order potatoes and say, Pela me I'm a potato person. Potatoes on me, we are friends. I knew from that sentiment that Sis Lengi was a person who I wanted to hold close to me and my family. When we had these conversations, it was a truly uncertain time for the country, and mothers of our generation had a very real and unnerving fear for our children's futures. But Sis Lengi was fearless. She was brave, and she was outspoken. She was dignified and hardworking. She was the consummate servant leader. But again, I do not stand here to eulogize Professor Lengin Kize, the politician or diplomat. I want to stress the qualities that I described here were unequivocally fueled by a deep love for her husband, her children, and the wealth of friends like me who had the privilege of calling home guy. Today, we, mem we memorialize this queen, but in doing so, I implore all, all present to wipe our tears, square our shoulders, soldier in, and meditate on the words of John Donne. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee, mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkest thou dost overthrow, Die not, poor death, 
nor yet canst thou kill me from rest and sleep, which but, but thy pictures be. Much pleasure, then, more must flow, and soonest our base men with thee go. Rest of their bones and soul's delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dost with poison worn sickness dwell. And popular charms can make us all sleep well, and better than thy stroke. Why swallest thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. We love you, Sislengi. Rest in his everlasting peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would now like to invite for a tribute for the from the National Children and Violence Trust, Ms. Patience Chawuke, to come to the stage and give a tribute. I'm told she is not there. Could I then ask, oh, you will speak, okay, thank you. It's not a very easy morning trying to find speakers. Good morning. My name is Patience Chauge. I am a social worker from National Children and Violence Trust. It is with great sadness that the National Children and Violence Trust pay tribute to our founder and chairperson, Professor Tlenguem Kize, who passed on on 16 September 2021 at the age of 69 after a long, hard-fought battle against ill health. Prof Mkise, as we affectionately called her, who was Deputy Minister in the Presidency of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities, touched the lives of so many vulnerable women globally through her lifelong dedication to humanitarian work. The NCBT community has lost a great soul. Prof Mkise will solely be missed by each person she touched. A dynamic, strong, and hardworking leader. Prof Mkise worked tirelessly for human rights and gender equality, as well as to provide services to the people until her last days. We must add value in all we do, was one of her favorite lines. We have heard her. It is now up to us to build on the legacy she has left behind, upholding the values she held dear. Launched in 1995 by Professor Tlingwem Kize, the NCVT works to reduce the effects of violence and trauma on children, women, and families, and make sure they are educated about their rights. It does this through advocacy, running workshops, and campaigns, and by providing trauma management and counseling. The NCVT operates in most impover impoverished informal settlements around Gauteng, including Dipslut, Rodipot, Florida, Haniju, Zanspreit, Cosmos City, Douglas Dale, Ivory Park, and Rubber Ridge. There are high levels of gender-based violence. All involved in the NCVT will miss Professor Mkize dearly, and we send our sincere condolences to her family. May she rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Chauke. 
This morning, good pet, I listened to a podcast, Yes 702 where Professor Mkise was um, interviewed by Pippa Green. And this was in relation to her work in the TRC as the chairperson of the Reparations and Rehabilitation Committee. And I knew this morning that she helped to set up the President's Fund to pay reparations to victims of apartheid and also to fund the exhumations and reburials. And in, in the interview, when she was asked, she says it is difficult to reflect on the TRC. There are days when you are upbeat, and there are those where you really think this was a great idea. But there are times where you say, where are we? That was the interview she had with Pippa Green. And this was an interview held 20 years since the TRC hearings. When she was asked if she thought that the 30,000 once off payment to victims was enough, which was a decision of the TRC, well, which the decision of the TRC was that victims would be paid 21,000 for six years instead of the ones of 30,000. She responded by saying, thinking about healing or social justice as a critical element of this transnational justice project, I would say I wish we could have canvassed the issue of victims and made the commission more victim-centered and ensure that the legislation itself spoke to that. She went on to say, remember there were conferences and ad hoc discussions before the law was finalized. So if it was victim-centered, we would have canvassed the views from the public in general as to what their thinking was, and that is to the victims as well. She further said there were companies and multinationals that had benefited from, the, from apartheid, but the commission had no power to ask them to contribute to victims. And basically, neither did our legislation. And this made me think a bit of the person that Professor Deputy Minister Mkise was, and the contribution that she has made to the liberation of our people in the way that she could. And all that I would ask as program director today, DG in the presidency and minister in the presidency, is that we do indeed reflect on her words. Because that is enshrined in the preamble of our constitution, that we need to give recognition to those that fought for our liberation and those that suffered in the process. As we see today, many things are happening. People are reburied, exhumed from faraway lands, but there is still a lot more to be done. Let us do right by those people. Having said that, I would like to invite, um, I think it's Tembi Sile from the Progressive, or Tabi Sile, sorry, from the Progressive Women's Movement to come and give a, a tribute. Ms. Tabi Sile Msezani.
Uh, thank you, Program Director. The Mkiza family, friends, colleagues, Minister in the Presidency, Memaitem Ashavani. The Methodist Church, where Professor Mkizi was a member, in Bryanston, Women's League, members of the PWMSA. I've just been asked now that I should come and speak on behalf of PWMSA. And We, as women of South Africa, remember in 2006 when the progressive women's movement of South Africa was launched and it was led at that time when, after its launch by Ms. Balega Mbete, the, pro, the former Speaker of our Parliament, Ambassador Noel Tando Mayendesvia, who is here with us. And the progressive movement of South Africa was launched in order to accommodate women of South Africa irrespective of their political uh, affiliation. Later, Professor Tlenyue Mkize took over as a co-convener. Progressive Women's Movement had reached women of different cultures, of different uh, calibers and it didn't choose who must become a member. But in our programs with our provincial representatives, Professor Tlenguem Kize, especially at the time, emphasized that we need to reach out to all corners of our provinces. We need to reach out to all women, irrespective of where they come from. And that was Professor Klingwem Kize. Women of the Progressive Women's Movement, through Pro uh, uh, Professor Klingwem Kize, especially at the time when she was with the Post and Telecommunication Services, uh, were trained on computer skills. Ordinary women who would not otherwise have had an opportunity. We came out there with a, a, a tablets because of Professor Lenguem Kize and she was saying wherever you are, even in the most rural, rural, what you do, you must be able to do it perfectly. She was a perfectionist. I am here standing talking about a giant of a woman but with humility. Professor Klingue Mkize was not difficult to reach. You will not have to speak to her PA in order to talk to her. She was accessible. She was a sister to all of us within the Progressive Women's Movement. She would delegate anybody at any time. She would call and say, Sissy, please, sit in the office, we don't have an office with uh, as PWMSA, please go to the MEC in, in Gauteng and, and speak to her and ask if she could provide us with an office because she wanted order. She was orderly. She, she wanted women, when they work, they, they, they should work in a space that is decent. Death be not be proud. Gufa, lupi utosilako, where is thy sting? 
a woman that has made sure, as it has been said, and the office where she was, the women of women, uh, children and persons with disability who did not speak about women and children and people with disability, but who reached out to them. She, she, she had a way of getting the work that she was uh, deployed to and the work, the organizations that she was involved with and get them together and be able to reach out to the communities that were supposed to be reached by what she was involved in. Minister, yes. your other part is gone. The staff in your office has lost a mother. You are now the one mother without the other part as a mother. But God never makes a mistake. It was time. As people abakolwayo, we know that abasebenzi le kufanele bapumule. Namakotuga as a accounting wherever cities where they go and work, when they have finished working, babopa im twalo yabo, bakotu ge babuyele emakaya. We have lost as PWMSA, Umama, a friend, a colleague, a leader in the true sense. But as is to Duzeni, Moguti, it was time for Professor Tlengwem Kize to pack up her bags and go home where she came from. Because Sonke Siazi Lasa Vela Kona and when it is time to go home, you don't look back. She never looked back. What are my children going to do when time came? Then you were packed her bags and left. What is good with her, what we have learned in the free state, the, the, the people there, they normally say, I think we have cut a pattern even at the most difficult time of your life, of your health, but you stand straight because no one knew that Klengiwe was going through pain. Because there's never a time when Klengiwe was sick, when we didn't see Klengiwe because of illness. But she was going through pain, but silently and standing up straight and taking care of her responsibilities in government, in the community, and everywhere, and at home as a mother. Bantobam, niayazi into umama wenewe itand. Babum kiz, unkos kazu wako agafanga uleli. She is still going to be your, guide, your guiding angel. Uzobe eko nanani at all times. And your home will never be cold because ngokamba gamama ekaya kya banda. Aba ninzi bati amakaya abo ape la mklaza nekwa hamba o mama babo. And I'm sure ikaya loga mkize alpelanga ngokamba kathlingiwe. You will keep that home warm as Klengiwe was, keeping it warm for you. To everybody, to the government of South Africa, that Klengiwe has served with humility, with dignity. As a representative of the country outside South Africa, in different departments, she has served with distinction. To all of you that have worked with you, we are saying, Mleh. and to us, CPWMSA, must to do again, Siyazi, Siyazazi is Fisos Gatlengi wing a PWMSA. We know where she wanted PWMSA to be, and it is our responsibility 
to take it where she wanted it to see PWMSA Ikona. Commissioner Mazibugo, Umsebenzi, Usele, Utlenywe, Agahambanga, Umsebenzi, Siza Ukubega. All the provinces, repre uh, provincial representatives, let us continue to do what Lenyue wanted us to do best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Cezanne. I think to the family, as they listen to everybody speak today, we're not telling you new things about who Professor Nkise was. But my fellow mourners are telling you what you probably would not have woken up and thought about this morning, or the extent to how phenomenal a woman she was. And as, as I was sitting there listening to Mam and I was saying to myself, one of South Africa's greatest advocates for the emancipation of women was President Oliver Reginald Tambo. And with Professor Mkise, one could see those traits of President O.R. Tambo because she lived the life of an activist for the empowerment of women, for the safety of women, for the education of women, and also embodied what all young women would have wanted to see themselves to grow up to be in what Professor Nkise was to South Africa. This is the woman that South Africa had and I don't want to put pressure on you. You are not Lengiwe. You are Londiwe, you are Fezile, and you are Zinzi. You are your own women. But your mom set a very good example. All of us would want to be the wife that she was to you, but pet. We try in our own little ways. We win some, we lose some, because I'm sure she too won some and she lost some. You must have learned a lot from your mom and what you would want to see in your own girl children in future, but also see in the way that your father treated your mother, how to treat a woman as a young man in a country of gender-based violence and femicide. I would like to invite to the podium to pay tribute to Professor Nkise. Her office, one of the members in her office, Mr. Lebohang Mutiba, to come forward to share stories with us about this phenomenal woman who was accessible, as Mam Sezana said, who was very organized and orderly, but just loved her stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Program Director. Mkize and Govese families, distinguished dignitaries, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We are today here to celebrate what I'll call a life well lived. We are celebrating the illustrious but subtle life of Professor Klingon Mkise. As uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson puts it, the purpose of life is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. 
This quote befits the kind of life that Prof led. She led a full life which in many ways personified servanthood. To some, she was a mother, a wife to her husband, a sister to others, a comrade to others, and a friend. Well, to us, she was our deputy minister, a mentor, and a very knowledgeable leader. In every office that uh, we've been to, she was always clear about her vision, as well as how to execute it. She was always available, supportive, and decisive. She listened to us, always gave us feedback, caring about our general well-being, and praised us on a job well done when we did. And if we did not do it, she will obviously say, no, this is not good, and then we'll have to correct it. She would normally ask, how's the family? Then I'll go about, even to every staff member, she'll, she'll, she'll do that. She'll ask about your general well-being. Are you fine, though? When it comes to work, she would normally say, maybe it will be after we've worked on an input. She'll call and say, I need to go through on this uh, input. And then afterwards, when you've uh, worked, she would say, does it sound OK now? And indeed, it will sound OK. Then one would say yes. Well, for me, I started working with Prof in 2014 when we were still at the uh, Economic Development Department. On my very first assignment, unknowingly, I, account, I uncovered for myself her strong work ethic because she really liked doing her job and not just doing it for the sake of doing it, but doing it perfectly. At the time, she was supposed to address a conference in Botswana, and she didn't like the initial input which was prepared for her. So it had to be reworked. And because we started late, it was already after 9. I finished around uh, 2 in the morning. And then that time, we were in the hotel lobby with uh, the late uh, Sis Nelly, who was one of our colleagues as well. And then I asked Sis Nelly, it's late. Will Prof have time to go through this input and then be able to make a, a, a to meaningfully participate? Nelly said, no, don't worry. She'll wake up in the morning still, go through it, and if ever there are any other changes, she'll still make it, and then she'll be, still be in time to, to, to make an input. I was, I was so astounded. With Prof, we would normally say that it's not over up until she moved to the podium. Even when sitting, because she would have her input on the iPad, she would still be reading, rereading, making sure that every sentence makes sense. And if ever there was something that needed to be changed, she would say, please change this before I can go and, and deliver. So when she was assigned the Deputy Minister of Telecoms and Postal Services, I realized that uh, developmental work was imprinted in her DNA. So this is what she really liked doing, and she did this with absolute humility. She was an organized community developer, a woman of faith, an intellect, and generally a hard worker. She was also a smart worker who moved with times. Being a deputy minister of the then uh, telecoms and postal services, she would refuse to refer to a printed speech, but would rather have it sent to her iPad up until now. She also saw the difference technology made, and as a result, she introduced it in her developmental work. As Umam uh, Msezana said, if we were to go around the country, I'm sure there are women who are now working because of the IT or computer training they received as a result of a prof's intervention. Also, as a woman of faith, now and then in her schedule, there will be a request to speak at a particular church service, the celebration, or Umanyano, as she went to, to, to uh, Methodist, sorry. And she would prioritize this and properly prepare for it. She didn't do this just because it had to be done, but you could see that she was a prayerful woman. In some of our staff meetings, where we will meet outside the office, she will ask before the start of the meeting, what is the word of the day? So she would want us to start with prayer. She would want us to start with the word of God. When, we, when work was done and there was nothing worrying her, 
she will be humming hymns, of course, uh, 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 church hymns. You will pick up this when you call her, maybe you want her to check something in her emails. So while she's still busy going through her emails, she will be busy humming a, a church hymn to show that she was uh, 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 at peace and unbothered. When it comes to work, she's, she likes preparedness and order. That is a structured approach of doing her work. You wouldn't be shooting in all directions when working with Prof. Things had to be structured from the start. Before working on her input, she would say, let's put down the framework first. What are our thrusts? There is a lot of good uh, experiences that we could share from dusk till dawn, but let me please stop here. May her wonderful soul rest in power and rise in glory. Thank you. Strength to you, Lebohang, and to all her staff in her office. May you be comforted today as you listen to the wonderful tributes that are being given to this wonderful woman who I used to sit with when I was still deputy minister. And we would be reminded that as deputy ministers, we have nothing to lose, and I hope you're not listening, Deputy Minister Bilani Majak, that we have nothing to lose but our ministers. And I would always say, but why are we even here? We shouldn't even be deputy ministers. We, we don't have executive powers. We can't take decisions and all of that. And she would always say to me, I'm an I and our tool. Just do your work and be fine with it. And I would say, no, man, why are we kept such a large number of deputy ministers? And she would say, I am again, some siblings who are and All of us, in some way or the other, have learned something from Usis Lenyu. I want to read an excerpt from a conference that she attended when she was Deputy, Deputy Minister of Higher Education and Training. And she made a, a very profound observation where she said, and I quote, the danger, we start, the danger we face starts within. The danger is not that the state will not finance the humanities and social sciences, but do we have the courage to tackle the difficult questions? And I think this is a question that we need to continuously be asking ourselves. Because we face a difficult time as a country. In the fiscus, with COVID-19, and all sorts of issues with the protectionist world, economically, these are the questions that we need to be asking ourselves from time to time. And this is a question that she asked at some point in her beautiful life. May I, sound engineer, request a musical item from you uh, before I call the next speaker. Um, I hope he will be here by then uh, from Academia Professor Mandla Makanya. Over to you. Um, Kindly join in the singing. I would if I could. I am both in the window.
thank you very much, Program Director, uh, Minister Ayanda Lolo. Just greet the members of the family, uh, with all the family members, and to say condolences uh, to you. I want to greet all the ministers in our midst, in all your diverse portfolios, from the presidency across the portfolios of our government. Also, just want to greet all the deputy ministers who are with us here this morning to greet the leadership of the African National Congress in its entirety and all the leaders of our own communities at various levels of our communities. Just want to greet all the fellow mourners who are with us here this morning, ladies and gentlemen. News of the third passing of Professor Lengi Wemkeze through us in the university community and beyond into the cauldron of darkness. I was at a loss of words for hours until I channeled my loss and my shock into a partial rage. For this purpose, I recall Dylan Thomas, whose poem, Do Not Go Gently Into the Night, which literally put words of lament in my mouth, and I quote, do not go gentle into that good night. All age should not bend and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men, and I add women, at their end, no duck is right, because their words had forked no lightning. They do not go gentle into that good night. Good men and women, the last wave by, crying how bright they frail did might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men and women who caught and sang the sun in flight and then too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men and women near death who see with blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of light. Allow me to grieve and rage against the dying of the light that seems to have dimmed on the occasion of the timely passing of Professor Atlegi Wemkeze. Such colossal loss has turned us, as poem suggests, quote, wild men and women who caught and sang the sun in flight, and then too late they grieved it on its way, unquote. Today is a sad day for me, having worked in all of the scintillating innovations that Professor Mkize brought to higher education space. Our interactions were principled and had behest, students-centric always. 
Her caring disposition and conscientious character, we know now, was signposted during her student days at Morris Isaacson High School, where she got involved in student politics and never stopped her momentum ever since. She was a trailblazer, more of a comet shining bright in the dark period of student neglect and unrest. This was a spirit nurtured not in the stratosphere of the ministries that Kabazela served with such a plump, from Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services to Deputy Minister of Correctional Services, Deputy Minister of Economic Development, Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Minister of Higher Education and Training, and also Minister of Home Affairs, and notably, Commissioner of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. She made an unparalleled contribution to our South African society. Our university received her light at a point in society where there were many challenges of inequality in access in the university sector as a whole. Professor Schlengiwem Kize made policy provisions each time she entered a cluttered higher education space, bringing her experience from being the founder member of the National Children's and Violence Trust a children's rights organization. There is the benefit of experience working with women and children's rights within the detainee support movement of the United Democratic Front, as well as representing the students during intervarsity sessions, during a student days at the University of Zululand, whereat she chaired the student Christian movement here is leadership writ large. We at the University of South Africa, commonly known as UNISA, looked at the trajectory of Professor Mkiza's comet and duly ascribed primacy to the psychosocial support role she played as part of the team which ran the workshops on the integration of the returning political exiles. In addition to being convener of the progressive women movement of South Africa, it was a clear sign of an active organic intellectualism in a classic sense, prompted by Gramsci. As she grew academically and politically, she railroaded the national democratic revolution in palpable ways. In particular, she brightened dark corners that apartheid had created, for which alleviation UNISA awarded her an honorary professor of psychology. It was noteworthy that as an academic, she pursued the transformation agenda of institutions of higher learning, and especially the inclusion of young women in faculties of science, medicine, and engineering. In awarding her the honorary professorship, we as UNISA did not have our faith misplaced. For she chartered cause professing noble ideas as she participated in numerous international conferences with special focus on peace, on social justice, on anti-racism, on human rights, on equity, and on inclusion. I want to suggest that she has once upon a time served as ambassador of South Africa to the Netherlands and will henceforth continue as our high commissioner in the heavens above. This Prof. Kiesel's bright comet carries her back to starry skies as we celebrate her life. There her soul will rest in eternal peace. Fare thee well to you. 
to the entire Mkiza family and her colleagues in the presidency minister, her colleagues in the cabinet, her colleagues in parliament, in church activities, to the entire South African community that includes our community in the African continent. I just want to say, Agwetanga Lungetanga, Mashuku Kumutahang, Rilla Lilin, Magotete Umyama, Uvele Ukukai, Alice Sui Lid Atabuho. Thank you. We remember Professor Mkise's light in life, and thank you so much. Thank you very much to the sound engineer. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Makanya. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to read up a little more about what people would be saying about Professor Mkise. And I just received a message from a lady, Usis Duduma, who used to work at the presidency. And this is just to illustrate what Lebohang had said and others had said about Mrs. Lengiwe, that she is supportive and decisive and that she's always interested in the well-being of others. The message reads, I sobbed so much last night, last Thursday, as Lengiwe was such a humble soul. I sent her a message on the 2nd September asking for help about removing a six-year-old from an irresponsible mother that is on drugs. I had no idea Shengiwa was assigning someone to help her from her hospital bed. Good people are called to glory, Yandi. Well, Shengiwa is now resting free from pain. And this reminds me, good pet, of our conversation we had about her. When the news broke, there is a chat group of ministers and Minister Mbalola posted the news on the chat group. Everybody was shocked. It appeared in the chat group that nobody knew that she was suffering so much pain and was lying at some point in a hospital bed. Just to also remember in her time as Deputy Minister of Higher Education because as Professor had said here, she was student-centric and in all her, her interactions she was principled and that she was a trailblazer. Prof speaks of her academic achievements and her intellectual prowess. She said in some seminar that whether or not people have formal education, there is a big debate around the Constitution and people are speaking about issues that have been raised in this conference. Race, culture, language, social justice, bridging rural and urban communities, HIV and AIDS, gender inequality and poverty. No group of people is better equipped to provide leadership to help society understand the issues that create tensions in people's minds. Corruption, ethics, poor governance, etc. Taking advantage of this rich engagement, you can begin to grapple inside and outside the classroom 
through the humanities and social sciences, which are really about us, the people. Those were Sislengiwe's words. And this supports what the professor has said about her intellectual prowess and also her acad academic achievements. Could I ask that Ms. Numason Tomazibogo comes to the podium, but could you just pl uh, please play a song that will bring her up to the stage? Thank you. Sound engineer, thank you. Sisondo? The pillow, the robe, Memoya, I do be hile, Empache hofa, Ritsepile, Ritsepile, Wena, The puto, the nata. Empadi carabo, sona di nyanyane, fela Jehova, ritsepile, ritsepile, wena, runa Jehova, ritsepile. Program Director, Minister Ayanda Lolo, allow me to take two minutes of your time and say, Tina, Bagwango Bese, Siakia, Sipele Zelin Tombazan. Yes, Nyaz Guti Kovit Kona, Kota, Muvumele Nguti Nieti, Uzo Suguma, Moholo Moya, Uzo Shala Pansi, Mo Patagabi. Who pagame, 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 who hallelujah, who pagame. South Africa, Umama, Siapong, Utinal Bona, Lel Plomel, Elishegangaga, Nalamgel, Lana Kela Umuzi, Lan Zalela Bantuan, Nam Sanja Yuko Gutua, Professor Shenyue, Bushe, Besuk Tuani, Mkize, Babu Pet, Angishuguti, Ikamalamu, Nomason, Tomazibugo, Umsunguli, 
no merely we albinism society of south africa kodwa namhlanje angibi umeli nomsungu lwe albinism kunzima kimi ngoba ngithunyiwe ngithunywe abantu abakhabazekile la e south africa ukuthi mam noma sonto phuthuma uye kwamkhize uyise induduzo kodwa ngizosho ukuthi abazu noma sonto bangamangali ukuthi akumangu noma sonto la kume abantu abakhubazekile base south africa ngokusho njalo ukuthi ngizothi angina mandla abaningi laba abazi ukuthi ngina lawo mandla minister nqe those who know me will tell you that i'm brave and able to step to the mark at any given time today i'm challenged with the task to represent persons with disabilities in bidding farewell to deputy minister of the department of women youth and Dis persons with disabilities i stand together with great sadness and a heavy heart professor hlengiwebu hlemkhize was instrumental in the process of ensuring that we gracefully moved from the department of social development to the to the department of women youth and persons with disability this she did gracefully assured us professor mkize assured us that you the people with disabilities all your problems all your programs will be identified by you because you say nothing without us without us allow me to join you and minister the deputy minister did not come to us and have her hands and say how are you people with disabilities she embraced us usihlengi we never minded to touch us and feel us and walk with us they all deserve the man made certain that we did not feel displaced in the move we worked diligently in a short space of time in a department and we received the special attention we needed for the prescribed areas to the team in the department of women youth and persons with disabilities shalin you might be here i can see emily mam shoki babu peni pedima when i heard of the news i thought of you dg sis choice minister i thought of you because why did i thought of you at no stage did mam hlengiwe showed us uma ngobe sazanga kathi nyagula usebenze nje ngenkosikazi ethembekile kuma proverbs mfundisi wami wathi noma kunjani ubevuke ekseni apheke ibhodwe abuye kodwa asikhe isikhathi la thina singabantwana bakhe njengabantu abakhubazekile esike sambona ehleli phansi ethi echu yikho ngithi makabongwe makabongwe uphakeme unamandla namhlanje sizothi hamba kahle qhawe lethu when i thought the, when i got the news i responsibly propped effectively and spoke to the people with disabilities and said what a loss allow me to share most sincerely condolences to everyone in the in the disability arena prayers will be need to be divine the strength you carry you will carry the strength siyazi ukuthi namhlanje but pet asikuthandazeli sithandaza nawe baba siyazi ukuthi umndeni wakho umndeni okholwayo sithi sizokududuza ngo romans 8:28 uthi all things work together to them that loves the lord ithi ngokukhumbuza ebut pet ukuthi sike sahambi youth alive nawe nosihlengiwe sathi philippians 4:21 for me to live is christ but to die is gain khumbulana ukuthi ngithe ngithunyiwe angizihambeli ngedwa 
We have got seven focus areas by the South African Human Rights Commission with its mandate to promote, protect, and monitor the realizations of human rights in South Africa. People with disabilities currently account for 5.1% of the population from the age when they were born, from five years. Um, it is significant to, uh, to plan, allocate, ensuring that we protect, promote, monitor persons with disabilities. Therefore, we cannot afford to take the shoulder of the wheel. We need to ensure that the work continues in her memory despite the short tenure in the role she impactfully and respectfully achieved significant strides. As persons with disabilities, our different sectors, let us not dis be despondent. We need to realize that we once again may be required to advocate educate the various limitations we have and patiently accommodate the changes that we have got in the loss of our dear mother, Umangobes. We have to have patience because we may not have the kind of reception we received from Prof Mkise. She was uniquely accommodating, she was available listened at any given time. We pray for the continuity and progress in the work we have started. Let us not nullify her great efforts. Let us rather preserve and appreciate her hard work. To the Mkize family, on the behalf of persons with disabilities across the country, kindly receive our most sincere condolences God promised in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 16, verses 5 to 15. Mantona baga se slemi, nezo stolis kat, nil funde lel vez engin jela lona, ogwa manje guse se li vindi, ankond guti gungani umame sile gota siyaz gutu mama, uhambe nani lente suge la gu 2017. Let us comfort let us keep our prayers. We pray too that the, we are strengthened during the difficult time of sorrow. We can also rest assured that the Deputy Minister serves the people of South Africa earnestly with pride and integrity. We pray to God that she must grant her eternal rest. May the light perpetually shine upon her. Rest in peace. Tumbazan. Mango Bese. Let me tell you what the people with disabilities have said. I should tell you, Minister, these are the three points that us as persons with disabilities, we say, we have lost a champion. We have Zimbabwe pet, yes, it's a little bit. We have got in Kumbula, Jerome Zulu, ZN, the Kuluras in Tanda Maposa, my set temper, et et to tap tap Makatin, a young and a ringing. Minister, for us it means all the progress we fought is now very high risk. Are we sure that when the president gives you somebody to help you, you came to us? And the DG, and you said, we dedicate deputy minister to us. It is high risk. It is a risk factor whether we are going to get the right person. Our call for all government departments to include the needs of persons with disabilities in their programs has suffered a huge setback. Our sector now has expertise experience and hard-working expert, yet they remain marginalized, not utilized, contribute delivery. They are sitting there. All that we think as persons with disabilities that we should go to PWT 
and the department of uh, 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 is not there. We need to get people with disabilities. One thing that Professor Schlegel said to us, let's go to school. Minister, there's a high list of unregistered young children with disabilities. The list is long. We have fought very big battles. We are working now on the hate crime bill. Minister, on the 1st of October, that bill is going to close. Can it go into parliament so that we can pro be protected? Minister, we have lost a pillar. We have lost our jersey. We have lost our blankets. As I say to you, this is not Nomasonto who's speaking. These are the people with disabilities. When we met with our Excellency Deputy Minister, we were going to peruse an idea of the National Disability Agency. Lastly, when we lose a champion, the core and decisions of whatever government has done, we are going to start afresh. Thus, we have seen the pattern that every five years when the other minister or the deputy minister leaves, we are going to be there. In conclusion, all sectors of government, all government say, we're saying to the president, is there going to be some benefit, some strong management and say to people who have not employed, People with, uh, uh, people with disabilities, the 7% is nowhere next to us. As I conclude, Nyabong, Ninabaga Kupel, Agahambega, Shumango Bese, Putpet, Siazgu to Munto Koloayo, Bantanabaga Sis Baba Baga Mamu, Shengiwe, Aguishanga Unge Shanga, Unkulunkulu, Um Shengiwe, to E.T. Ihubo, 23. No man has got in certain slogu fa uba nami nyabong. Thank you very much, Miss Mazibugo. You brought so much life to the stage. Siabong asis. Everyone speaks about what Usis Lengiwe has done. And Ms. Mazibugo relates of a Lengiwe who was a warm person, a workaholic, a caring for those Abakuba Zegile. The community has fond and loving memories of the late Professor Lengiwe Mkiz. Ms. Mazibugo requests that we should not let her work go to waste and, for, and be forgotten, but rather we should put shoulder to the wheel and continue where she left off. My next speaker is the Treasurer General of the African National Congress, Mr. Paul Mashatile, a TG. I invite you to the stage. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Program Director. Babum Kize, the children, and the entire family of Comrade Klengiwe, 
relatives and the loved ones, leaders of our government, the leadership of political parties here present, members of the academia, representatives of civil society, organizations, comrades and friends. A deep sense of loss and grief has engulfed all of us as we have come together this morning to bid farewell to our dear comrade, Comrade Lengwen Kize. On behalf of the African National Congress, I convey our heartfelt condolences to Ubaba Nkize, the children, and the entire family, Yaga Comrade Lengiwe, the relatives, friends, and the loved ones. We say to all of you, Agwehlanga Lungehlang. Myself and Comrade Lengiwe share a common history in the struggle for liberation. Both of us were active in the structures of the United Democratic Front in the 1980s, operating from different parts of our country. The news of Comrade Lengue's passing came as a great shock to those of us who have known and worked with this lifelong advocate for social change justice and equality. Our feelings at her departure are best captured in the words of former Indian Prime Minister Nehru, who in paying tribute to Gandhi had the following to say. The sun that warmed and brightened our lives has set, and we shiver in the cold and dark, close quote. Indeed, program director, we shiver in the cold and dark, for in Comrade Lengue Mkise's passing, the sun that warmed and brightened the lives of many has set. Death has robbed us of a, a cadre who exhibited some of the finest qualities required by our movement causing us to shiver in the cold and dark. We will always remember Comrade Lengiwe as a humble and dependable servant of the people of South Africa. She was a person of principle, a well-rounded pedagogue, a scholar, a critical thinker, an intellectual of note as well as a sharp an eloquent contributor in shaping the policies and programs of our movement and our government. We will never forget the many years in which she worked tirelessly, championing the interests of the most vulnerable in our society. She connected very well with the people, especially the poor. In her people with disabilities found a valuable ally. She made an immense contribution in the ongoing struggle to assert equality, dignity, and total emancipation of women. She also played no small part in ensuring that the doors of learning and culture remain open for all. We will also remember Comrade Lengiwe for the role she played as one of the midwives to our country's negotiated democratic transition. We owe it to her and many other patriots of her caliber that our country was able to navigate through this delicate transition relatively peacefully. She stood for the truth. She was able to build bridges of reconciliation. She also understood that reconciliation without justice and redress was impossible. She preferred unity over disunity. 
persuasions over confrontation, inclusion over exclusion, hope over despair, as well as progress over regression. Up to her last days, she continued to immerse herself in the daily struggles, especially of those on the margins of our society. She made it her mission that no one must be left behind. To us, the name of Comrade Lengwem Kiza belongs to the galaxy of exceptional men and women who, through their dedication and discipline, made an indelible mark in our nation's collective consciousness and helped to shape our country's democratic destiny. Her name deserved a special mention in the history of our country. Comrade Lengwem is no more but we are confident that her caring spirit will live amongst us forever. Although death has robbed us of her immense capabilities, we have no doubt that her life will be emulated by many. By force of example, she, was show, she has shown us the way. Our task is to defend and deepen her proud legacy, which straddled across many parts of our national life. The best and lasting monument we can erect for Comrade Lengiwe is to continue building a caring and a more humane society. This we must do because our understanding that the true measure of societal progress is the extent to which it takes care of the most vulnerable amongst its ranks. In the current climate of weak economic growth, increased joblessness, poverty and inequality, the ANC of Comrade Lengiwe must respond to the significant demands on government to continue and expand income support measures for those living in poverty. Subject to long-term affordability, serious consideration should be given to extending further support to the unemployed and those who are structurally much those who are structurally marginalized from the economy. Such support should be linked to a clear exit strategy and should enable especially young people to transition into gainful employment. Comrades, we must do all of these things as part of ensuring that the sacrifices made by Comrade Lengiwe and many like her were not in vain. We must also do all of these things assured in the knowledge that even though the sun that warmed and brightened our lives has set, even though Comrade Lengue is no longer with us, her legacy of caring for the marginalized must outlive her and prevent us from shivering in the cold and dark. Program Director, in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 44, when Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, fell too ill, his sisters Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus, who was in another town. Jesus arrived four days after Lazarus had died and had been buried. Martha ran to him to deliver the news both sisters were distraught, and Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus felt their pain and said to them, I am the resurrection and the life. And once they had showed him the tomb, he went cried and, and, and prayed and said, Lazarus, come out, and said to them, unwrap him and let him go. Babu Mkize, the children and the entire family, I'm sure you too send word to Jesus through your prayers to heal your wife, Babu Mkize, to heal your mother, 
the children, the daughter, the grandchildren. Yet, Jesus was in another town. I believe today that he has heard your prayers and today he is in your home to remind you once again that he is the resurrection and the life. Uti Ujeofa Putpet unwrap her and let her go. Uti release her from your emotions and your pains. Let her go and rest in eternal life without pain. We want to say to you today, as the African National Congress, may the Lord comfort you and give you strength. We want to say to our sister, go well, dear sister. Go well, comrade Lengiwe. You have made your contribution. We who remain behind will pick up your fallen spear. We want to thank your family for allowing you to be part of the bigger ANC family and for lending you to the liberation struggle. Siti Bagam Kize Bonke Budpet, we know you are going through pain. Kotwa Utu Yefa Mkululeni Ahambe. We will miss you, Comrade Klengiwe, till we meet again. May your soul rest in eternal peace. Amanda. Thank you very much, uh, Treasurer General of the African National Congress, for the wonderful words of comfort to the family and also to those that worked with her in government and to the greater family of the African National Congress, her comrades and her friends. I would li like to invite Minister Maite Nguanamashabani to the stage.
our respected former First Lady, Meg Ugum Kalumchali, our Treasurer General of the African National Congress, uh, Honorable uh, Minister Museka, and Deputy Ministers present here, Ambassadors, we are all here and all government officials, professors, the green and black blouse of the African National Congress. Yaga says, thank you, Nkize. You lifted our hearts and our souls this afternoon. Because that Mkize, Babu Mkize, and family, we are all here trying to say that's why I rose up with a wheel. You see, when the seed takes the ground, more comes out, like says Hengiwe, Professor Wazalogbang Gobez, Om Tata Wena Wata Hai, Imbalien Selen, Ubu Se Hengiwe, Bu Se Hengiwe, was beautiful inside and outside. I am here to say, as a colleague, what we say about her is what we had experienced, all of us, those who spoke and those who did not. Our department is called or named, was named, was ordained by our president, Prof. As Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. Speakers here spoke of vulnerabilities, including TG. I thought I had in one such moment that one of our people said, this is where the vulnerable people live. One occasion when the president was about to give a keynote speech address and opening of parliament, one disabled young persons, uh, person, I won't mention it by name, as she, as president was about to pronounce the full name of our department, said, we are not people uh, who need help. People with disabilities need to be assisted because they are just here to show that we are part of creation. They are not, Sasa would have been enough, but they want to contribute. They want to, they want our society to feel they are around and that they are not just living at our mercy. You know, Bamamukis, that, uh, a video broke my heart but lifted my soul a bit. We were at Putokwa to celebrate the woman of substance, the first female black, black female graduate in the University of Ohio in America, 
Me, Charlotte, Manya, Matek. She said to me, you know on the road, they said there's a school of disabled people. It's owned by a government. But, well, who shot on le, na le, na le, na le. When we woke up, or oh, by midday, <laughs> we were still going to where majority of the people of AME, that was started by Meshalot, Manja McCleck, were still waiting for us because she got so happy. When we got to that school of disabled people, we almost forgot that we were still on our way to the function of the day. So, Professor Bohle, thank you, Nkise, saved us pain. And you, Bob Nkise, Kabazel, when uh, and the children and the family know more than we do. But she really did not want to make her pain to be a pronouncement of each and every event and so on and so on. She wanted to continue serving. I worked with her. I can tell you that she served till I stopped denying. I didn't tell you this because I didn't even, there was no, there was no time to even come to the family to say, hey, I know she's not okay, but she does not want to be, she does not want this discussion about how unwell she is. She wants to take care, and care she did. Tiji, she took care of our people. You are right when you say, let's now, allow her to go and rest in peace. Because saving the people of South Africa, she did every minute. So, Baba Mukise, to you, to you she was the loved one, the darling, and to the family, and in particular the children, mother, grandmother, to the African National Congress, a servant and a member. But to you, family in particular, we really want to say words cannot express how our full gratitude of you borrowing us, her love, her caring, until this last moment. For me, I haven't just lost a colleague, but an elder sister. I'm sure those who worked closer to her know her better. That she would allow you to raise your voice as high as you want to, but where things need to be fixed, she'll finally go and say, more are you General, general, we're not gonna be. So we have lost, in the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities, a real warrior, particularly at this time when women are murdered at home, at church, in the streets. Everywhere they go, children and women, for some reason in our country, get not taken care of. Just as cabinet says, yes, the bill for the Council, National Council of uh, 
gender-based violence and femicide, let it go to parliament. She also say good night. But I'm sure wherever she is, she's heard the news. And we plead with South Africans that it mustn't maybe take too long before this bill, before we get a go-ahead to form the National Council of Gender-Based Violence and Femicide in South Africa. Since the news of her passing bro broke, we reflected on her life, contributions she has made to our country, and internationally and, and, and I'm saying in South Africa and internationally. Professor Mkize, today we all grieve and cry because we have lost not only her hands, but her good smile. I had an opportunity to serve with her as a treasurer of the ANC said in different places, in different corners under UDF, yes, ANCs and band, and there's a need for women to be represented uh, at the negotiations. She plays a small part, but two weeks ago she was like, you know we haven't told, or told it all about the stories we're hearing at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. You said something about it today, but I think there's a lot that still needs to be fixed. But she helped us unearth a little bit of what South Africa did not almost did not become. Me Manya Matek said before she came back home with Ndata Matek, now as a priest, her as the first black female scientist, this work is not for yourselves. Kill the spirit of self and do not live above your people, but live with them. And if you can, rise. Please bring someone with you. She has brought many of us with her, all thanks to a generous family and husband. We have lost a sister, a comrade, a colleague at a very crucial time when we are trying to make vulnerable people feel loved under the Department of Youth, of Women, Youth and People with disabilities, 12,000 young South Africans, particularly female, are unemployed. Not only here, yes, here in South Africa, but also, yes, because there's COVID. But here in South Africa, because there was apartheid, because before there was COVID. So, COVID just, you know, unearthed the, 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 the patchwork we were trying to do. And that's why we now can say it's now 12,000 of unemployed amongst us. We serve and we will continue to serve our people, but we need some help 
Ohambile usistengiwe. But there are more of you who can rise up. There are more of you who can show this family, this young ones she has left behind, that ANC loves its people, but it's not the responsibility of the African National Congress only. Even those who had had us before are welcome so that we work together to make this country a better place to live in. So there are many of us who remember all our heroes and heroines as she joins them painfully today. Let me close by reminding us of one Greek author said, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven in the lives of others. Close quote. Baba Mkise, beloved children, our in-laws, the entire family, our hearts and prayers are with you at this most difficult time. Particularly also officials she served with in the department and the entire civil service. May you find comfort in Psalm 147, verse 3, where the Lord assures us that he heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. Indeed, Professor Butler Mkise ran a good race. Awashanga Longa Eshi Ukabazel. Rest in peace, Professor Butler. Thank you, Mkise. And may we remain consoled in the fact that. She ran, she saved, she asked for no mercy. But as we shall remain missing her, we will continue saying, Malibongwe, Ikamalama Kozikazi, Malibongwe. Because she could take care of you, Tatam Kize, and the family, and help take care of children from disadvantaged homes and also join those in that uniform that we all belong to. Program director, I know she also meant a lot to you. So we all want to say to Bo Professor Abu and, and everyone and who, who is in the hall, she is one of us. But time has come this age for us to say she had worked hard. Seven Zima. May her soul, may her soul now finally rest in eternal peace. Thank you.
Sister, thank you so much for the song. I'm sure she's saying where wherever she is, she's smiling. One of the most beautiful songs. Thank you for the warm words of, of uh, comfort, loving, and fond words to the family, to her comrades, and to society in general. Those whose lives she touched in academia and in the other sectors that she was responsible for in her department. I would now like to invite um, Brigadier Shobe Tengosi, who will deliver the, 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 the sermon. She is the SAPS chaplain. And after that, immediately we will have Sihle Ngobane, uh, who will do the vote of thanks. And maybe just to break protocol, and then I will leave the stage. I would just like to make a few, one announcement actually, uh, so that Usihle uh, will be the one that actually closes with the vote of thanks. That the funeral will be on Saturday the 25th at nine o'clock at uh, Four Ways uh, Memorial Park. We will observe as we did today, except for the two that were sitting there, my young comrades, all protocols of COVID, including the DMA regulations. We will respect and do things in her honor, respect the family, and ensure that we stick to time, we sanitize, we mask up at all times, and observe social distancing. Siabonga Kakulu, and I'd like to thank the family and also thank my government for having given me the opportunity to direct this program and hope I did not disappoint. Over to you, uh, Brigadier. We really have a few minutes to go. Thank you very much. And Sihle, be ready after uh, the chaplain has uh, spoken. Thank you. We still want to say Aliki Kameli Lako. Iba Pagati Wetu, Kulukula Tongwele, Kulumengezulako, in the mighty name of Jesus. Ustrinise, Babona Mandla Onke, Egwazin, Gutai Kenyan Dawes Nayaguyonga Pantle Guako, Tatu Dumomoyongwele, Busatina Sonke, Imden Yonke, Nawonka Tintegele, Ekamen Lega Chesum Kubileo, Nozobuya Alandi Bandalake, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Program Director, Honorable Minister, Sis Ayanda Ngebonga, and Saubone Kamenel Gachesu, Bingelele Umden Gababu Kupela, Amakunga Ngebonga Kona, my family is one related to these families. Minister, 
Nama ministers wonka khona deputy ministers ama ambassadors uhulumente wokuhluka hlukana kwezihlalo zakhona and everyone present mhlambe to be safe let me say all protocols are respectfully observed be greeted emine gameni lenkosu Jesu Hallelujah mina ngumfundisi amene ngiyawuthanda ukuze ngizi ukuthi abantu bangilalele Nje ngomunye amakhosikazi Africa I feel like saying ilele inkosikazi you can hear umqumo eh nomgido sesinoma sonto namazwi nenhlokomo and everything that comes with ukuthi indeed ilele inkosikazi but there is something that uh, I have picked up as everyone was talking, seated there at the back. Uguti, she left the legacy. And Makoskazi, I like that. Uguti, as much as this, uh, Ubuhle, Professor Mkize is quiet now, but a person she was is still talking in volumes. And may those sound zingatuli, zikubege zikuluma. Even in times women, we feel challenged. Even times we feel like whatsoever that we're doing is not being felt. Let those sound zikasislengiwe, zikulume in volumes. And also give us the courage to be able to run even a little bit faster than yesterday. Because if ever we keep quiet in times such as this, history will judge us unmercifully. Amen. Makoskas, we are not just only adding the number. We are not only just uh, what consuming a space, but we are here for a reason. As our sister has departed, we'll soon depart. Let us leave the mark. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us leave the mark. Wherever you are, let everything feel good to the woman. Yes, the African woman has arrived. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to waste your time. I want us to read just one verse from the Bible. And Babum Kiz and a family, I just want to say three things. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. I want to read verse number 25. Just only one line from this verse where the Bible says, So I tell you, don't worry about everyday life. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. So I tell you, don't worry about everyday life. We are so used to some of us in terms of exercises. If ever we have to preach, we need to give a background of the scripture so that everyone will be able to understand. According to Matthew, because I know Mina. what it means to lose a person that you love. I know what it means. I buried my mom a few weeks back. I know what it means. Ugluza the manager from those that were working with us professor Shengwe in the office. I know what it means. Ugluza a person that you were always thinking. Umangabe is a second we have a direction. A lot will come up in your mind. 
Mrs. Namasondo, as she was talking here, she, she spoke about some of the things that were in the pipeline that we are still intending to do. All that has to be packed a little bit because a person that was being seen as a person to pioneer and assist in achieving those uh, assignments is no more. In the midst of all those things I have mentioned, don't worry. How come? How can I? How can we? Don't worry. But Jesus in the book of John, when he has, when he was about to, to depart, chapter 14, I know what is the instead of Hallelujah. Because Why am I saying we need not to worry? It's because the same God who created life in us can still be trusted with each and every details of our lives. He can still be trusted. Yes, your wife is gone, but he can still be trusted. He is the one who initiated life in us. Where to? Hence, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, yes, he knew us even before we were formed in our mother's wombs, but he knew us. He appointed us and set us apart. He still can be trusted, Bazalwane. As we walk, as we maneuver, as everything happens, he still can be trusted. Amen. The only thing that we can do for ourselves. Because yes, he is an omnipresent father, the father that doesn't leave us. He says in the book of Joshua, he will never leave nor forsake us. Life sometimes challenges us to a point we ask ourselves, where is God? What he says about this? He is here and he is still going to be here. And he has gone to so humble. No mercy humble as I speak now. Don't worry, because he can still be trusted with each and every detail of our life. That was my point number one. My point number two, worrying can be more harmful than to be helpful. helpful. So all what we can do is just to put our trust in him. Because he said in the book of Peter, we should cast all our burdens unto him, for he cares. Amen. For he cares. Mshampe, kungaba nama traces around us, that makes us feel as if he doesn't care anymore. Oh yes, he does. He cares. Masbegi tembale tuguye. Angek as ignore. No, but he is not a person that he should lie. And the little Bible, in the book of Nehemiah, I mean Nahum, we nab, no suglent lupego, and we are baza babalegela goe. Amen. We nab and scatters and lupego, and we are baz, a babalegela goe. I got a macone me shabelela, at we are Aba hall in a central lane. We are twala no smagat. Uzon twalam den gum kiss and alice's cat. Colleagues, the professor Shangiwe, Zon twalus magat, the South Africans, Zos twalus magat, go be a twalan. Tomunum baling as good as a yazle. Nimangazo smagat. O what he promised me. O what wherever I am, he will be with me. But in most of the times, whenever I find myself in troubles, when I look at the set of footprints 
assurance that he's still with me or not. I can't see another set of footprints. I only see one set. It means usugenga seko abesetiena lalela ke ngalesos cut ungasaboni another second set of footprints. It's because me na kulung kulung suwe se ngtwele kusuwe nga sa hambi wena kote kusuwe se hamba mina ni hamba na wuse maslombe am ya tuala nusmagad. Amen. Ya tuala nusmagad. Hallelujah. Ya tuala nu Jehovah. Angkrine ngokote. God does not ignore who I mean ignore who depend on Him. Hallelujah. He will always remain the same God. present in your lives. God is expecting us to have an attitude of a child to those abage baba bazali no baba bazali nje ngami uyazi ukuthi umntwana mangabe umshaya akwaze ngenzeka abaleke aye kude kodwa uthe khala ebe ezakuya kade uqedwe kumshaya because that is the sign ukuthi akukho la izwe yakhona the only hope the only trust is you for her life god is expecting us to do the same namhlanje mini May he help us to trust upon him. May he help us to depend upon him. May he help us to always look upon him, even in times of distress. Yes, he is able. He will see us through. That we have experienced death. May he continue to be what he promised to be in your daily lives. Come, let us pray. Musmagati kamalaku, shabunga gasege lobe umilu konung ulungkuru, konko kona kwa vela ngawe, segwe tembile, asna inda weso ya guyo, baba weto mangazayo, baba weto tembegayo, sitlange neglendawo, to commemorate, and thank you, kulungkulu ngempilu ga sitlangewe, Sisize moyo ngwele nangale ntambama. Masipuma glendawu. Uguti gube kona ubilo kutata sikfundile. Uguti how should we live our lives. Ukupaga misutu molu wako. Legelela omunye no munye wetu. Gule sisikate sok mauna. Uguti si understand. Uguti we are not supposed. Ukumuna njengaba ntaba ngina temba. Ngoba baba you did it all in your cross. Ngo Jesu Christu. Siyabo nga babo na mandla onke. Sebonga, ugwa zugote, uga nyenati even ngei kate zinje zempilo yetu. Zembule njalo baba, asifunu kamba sotwa, siafunu kamba nawe. Selegele legu kogonke kakulu moyo ngwele. We just want to pray for your family ga mkize. Kekama liga chesi kamel na mandla. Uguti moya wek eneso, moya gan kulu nkulo pilako. Umega nyenabo, babo na mandla onke. Bakumbuza ngei kate zonke. Kutage komunyo nkulu nkulu, ofana nawe. Ageko no munyo kulungula banga aguye nga pandle wako. Tatu tumongale ntamba ama uzvele njalo babo na mandla onke. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Father, we also want to pray for your leadership. Heko na glenda wo. Uguti babo na mandla onke uzoma na buba lege lele. Saba nige zilama assignments of leading. Abantu anabako na bantu bake mklabeni. Ume na buba buba kini suba lege lele. Kuko ngo kufuna abago enzu gutengele nye langa. Mabe figa guwe babo na mandla onke. Bakonu kombi msebenza bayenzi ile. Nge pride tuguti benze ngo kwe tembe ngo kubabize le kona. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you. Ugutuzo kubea ganyo nati. Kuze kifigu sukla kwa mkabelo njongo nkulu nkulu. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray in thanksgiving. In the church of God, say amen. Thank you. Chaplain, thank, thanks for the for the word. Uh, uh, 
especially to us, the way it is for the living, to comfort us uh, and the family in this difficult time. Uh, program director, family members and relatives, especially put pet and children, ministers and deputy ministers. Uh, I've seen Mam Kaluva, former chair of CRL, and Professor Mandlam Kize, and other leaders, uh, government officials, colleagues of the Ministry of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. Uh, all protocols observed. On behalf of the Mkize family, I would, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the President of the Republic, President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, for affording us an official state funeral on Saturday. I would also like to thank the Premier of Gauteng, David Makura, and the Gauteng government for hosting this memorial service together with the presidency, represented here today by Minister Monli Gungubele. I saw her, she left, he left early, who is the minister in the presidency. Thank you to the Minister of Women, Youth, and People with Disabilities, Minister Maiten Gwane Mashabane, who worked closely with Sislengiwe. The former ANC Women's League President, Minister Njimo Cheha, is here as well, and we are truly grateful for her presence. Thanks as well to the staff at the department and at the presidency who worked with Sislengiwe. All the work for her send off that you see today is it is because of them uh, that have put uh, all of this uh, together. Thank you, Program Director, Minister Ayanda Lolo, for doing an excellent job today for, uh, under difficult conditions. Thank you. I appreciate your work as well. I would like to, take, uh, I would like to thank the Treasurer General of the ANC, Comrade Paul Mashatil, for his touching tribute and uh, for being here to represent the top six and the ANC. Thanks, Comrade Paul. Thank you to all the mourners gathered here for coming to celebrate the life, the life of Professor Hlengi Mkize, and those that are watching online as well, and everyone that has sent messages of condolences over the past week, thank you. The family would like to thank you all for your generosity during this difficult time. Although the family appreciates all of you, they would like to specifically thank the nurses and doctors and all the other staff at the Vets Donald Gordon Medical Center for looking after Professor Tlingwe Mkize during her last days. Also, thank you uh, uh, to Kei Sekhwale for being there with the family from day one, assisting with statements, logistics, liaison, with the different government departments and the presidency and all the work up to today and to the culmination to Saturday. To all the people who played a great role also in Sisling Ewe's life, we say thank you. Kwanda La Pontate Corner, what you did to her, please do it to others as well in future. Sislengiwe played a big role in many of our lives. I personally have always come to consult with her as a system dialogue on how to handle certain matters. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who has drawn from her experience. I'll always call Sislengiwe and drive to the Afoway's house for, for, for consultation, for talking and, and, and getting advice. On behalf of many of her inherited sons and daughters by virtue of her work, I would like to say Sislingi Wela Langoko Lopumule, Tinasa Sel and Ezinging as a Semtlavin, Hambara, Hestisiwe to Omutle on and Tizem Slog. Send greetings to the other side, to our comrade Tambo Mandela, our comrade Jeff Makubo, our comrade Jolidi Matongo, our comrade Lutuli Chris Hani, and tell them that. 
we will come when it's our turn to make sure that the branch in heaven courage and does its political duties and follows through with its mandate. The country has lost a huge fountain of knowledge. It is worse for the women and children and all the downtrodden as she was passionate about them. You will find when you will talk to her about something, she would find space to say, how can we add women and children in this activity of yours? She took her work as Deputy Minister of Women, Youth and People with Disabilities to heart. We will miss her. Thank you and may God bless you all. So when we leave here through protocol uh, uh, regulations, we will have uh, pack, uh, packages of food where we'll, we'll, we'll have takeaways there by the door. So all of us, we, if you don't live without helping yourself with, with the food. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, we've reached the end of the program. We appreciate it.